That's a 16 inch cone on there. That's a little 12 inch. Zeke, we're here with Craig at Cones Inc. Tell them what, what we're trying to do with Lucky. Um, do the time, go 100 miles an hour. This is a uh, wow. bonnet So you want to run a Bonneville? So you want to run flat out? Yeah. Throttle wide open. So you want to build your exhaust pipe a little shorter. Because you don't need the torque. So the longer your exhaust, the more torque you'll have. The shorter your exhaust, the less torque, is the more horsepower you'll get. So you want to run a little bit shorter. You want your head pipes to come out to be no longer than 12 inches, probably even a little less. And when you get to your collector, your secondary pipes should be no longer than 3 inches, 4 inches. And then you just put a pipe on there. And you don't want to go too big. People make the problem of going too big. So when you build exhaust, you have pulse velocity or you have pulse volume. So Velocity builds a good tuned motor that has torque and horsepower, you can ride it around corners, you can do all that other stuff. Yeah. And then Pulse Volume is for horsepower junkies, guys that just want all the horsepower they can get, but they just will have nothing on the bottom end. So if you shift gears, it will take you a long time to go through the revs with the Pulse Volume. So we always like to tell people to go smaller because that's how they ride. But in your case, if you want to just go straight as fast as you can, just know that it will take you a long time to go through the RPMs. But once you get up there, yeah. you'll be great, right? Yeah. And so you want to focus on pulse volume. Pulse volume. So you want a little bit bigger diameter. But don't ever go more than an eighth of an inch in increments as you test. Okay. So when I build a pipe, like I build a pipe, that black bike, I built that one over there. I built pipes for race bikes and all that stuff for customers. I may go through 15 wow. to get it right. And I've been doing this for a long time. Actually, a little bit younger than you, actually, with my dad. But the biggest problem is, is that they make too big of jumps. And when you change exhaust, you make one change at a time. You never make two changes. Never. Never do it. Just make one change. If you want to change a little bit of length, just change the length. Don't change the diameter and the length. Because you want to test that. You want to learn. You want to learn from the failure. What you basically want to set yourself up for is to fail about five times. And once you fail the five times, you're going to gain ten times the amount of information. But you can't learn from it if you make two changes. Because you don't know which one affected the, the result. Yeah. Pulse volume, pulse velocity. I like to tell everybody, go pulse velocity. It makes for a better tuned bike. So if you lose the tune, you have a hard time getting your carbs set up, you've gone too big. So you've either out capacity the carburetor, and you just can't find the right jets to get it going right, or you need to come down in your exhaust diameters a little bit and bring back that tune so that you can start to tune the bike so it runs properly. So like on my bike that I'm building right now by myself, I need to go to post velocity because I want a nice riding bike. But on our bike, we need pulse volume. Correct. To go pull because out. all you want is wide open yeah. and the most maximum potential that the motor will pull. Okay. The only problem that you're going to have is that it's going to take you a long time to get through the RPM range. Yeah, because we have hardly any bottom. Right. So we call that a pipey bike. A bike that's real pipey is a pipe that has a very narrow power band. It's sort of like, uh, and then what? It just takes off. And that little takeoff point, and we call that a pipe beat pipe. Okay? And so, and we need to be really at 10,000 RPM. Exactly. So, if you're really short, you can go with volume. If you want to stretch that torque curve out and make it a little bit more rideable and get through the RPMs better. So, in Bonneville, one of the biggest problems is getting up to speed. Yeah, because it's soft. It's, 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 it's your whole setup. You have such a tall gear that a lot of guys. You know what, I'll, I ain't going to introduce you to Dennis Manning, Bub Enterprises. Do you know him? No, He's on Bub's Big Week out there. Yeah, he wants to run the Bub. Yeah. I, I will, if you get, you got my card, you call us back up, and I'll call Dennis and have him talk. He's done the land, well, he's held the land speed record. He knows what he's talking about. But one of the big issues that they always have when they're trying to go really fast is to just get up into that gear. Because you've made the pipe so pipey, it's so narrow in horsepower band, 
so you can't get there. So that's where you just play. Volume to velocity. So is there a way to have uh, uh, volume but get there quickly? That's the art part of exhaust. That's why there's so many people that sell exhaust. I'm one of a hundred people. There's science. So the science is your stroke, your bore capacity, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and then you need to learn the value of speed, right? So that when the exhaust port opens up, how fast it goes, yeah. so that you can tune your two into one properly, because you don't want two pulses happening at one time, right? Yeah. You want the pulses to come in staggered, so the one pulls or pushes the other. Normally we'd like a pull system, you don't want to push, because for every horsepower that the motor needs to produce to push the exhaust out is a horsepower that you don't have driving the rear tire. But people make the mistake of going too big, so there's that magic balance, and that is the art. Science will get you the diameters that you need, it will help you with length, and then it jumps into this black art, and that's the fun part, if you think about it that way. It could be frustrating. I find it fun, but that's my business. I like that part. We like to go to the dyno, don't we, Zay? <laughs> so just be, it's better to fail at trying a theory and learn from that than it is trying to ask 10 people, How to do you're going to get 12 questions, you're going to get 12 answers. My favorite thing is, is you ask 10 people one question, you're going to get 12 answers. <laughs> so it's much better for you to keep those two in mind. One change at a time, and be happy to fail, so that you add another learning curve, and you just keep stacking it. Give it yourself a couple years, you'll have a lot more information. I guarantee you, half my competition and half the people out here. Craig, thank you very, very much. It was a pleasure.